Hi everyone. So today we, we are going to uh, continue to talk, continue to solve the end of chapter four problems. Um, I believe we're going to spend another maybe three or four hours to solve the end of chapter four problems, and then we're going to move on to the next next chapter, chapter five. Okay. So the first problem that we are going to solve for today is problem. 4-36. Okay, so a man wants to help provide a college education for his younger daughter. He can afford to invest $600 per year for the next four years. Hanis, could you zoom out just a little bit so that Everything can be viewable. Okay, yeah, thank you, thank you. Okay, um, so he can afford to invest $600 per year for the next four years, beginning on the girl's fourth birthday. He wishes, he wishes to give his daughter $4,000 on her 18th, 19th, and 20th, and 21st birthdays for a total of $16,000. Assuming that 5% interest, what uniform annual investment will he have to make on the girl's 8th birthday through 17th birthday? Okay. So let's draw the cash flow diagram first. So we are working on problem number 4-36. So beginning on his girl's fourth birthday. Right. So starting from daughter's fourth birthday, four, five, six, and seven. He can afford to invest six hundred dollars. Right? per year for the next four years, right? And he want to give his daughter $4,000. So let's say here, a lot higher. Let's say this is the 18, 19, 20, 21st. Because he want to give his daughter $4,000 on her 18th, 19th, 20th, and 21st birthday. Um, and what is the interest rate? Okay is 5% interest rate, okay? And the question is, what uniform annual investment he has to make on his daughter's eighth through 17th birthday? So let's say here, eight, nine through here, 16 and 17th birthday, okay? So he wants to know this uniform annual investment he has to make from her daughter's eighth birthday through seventeenth birthday, right? 
he want to know this amount. Okay. So to have sufficient money to pay for to pay the four four thousand dollars in disbursements. So if he set a single payment of X at the end of period 17, which is at the end of his daughter's 17th birthday. So let's uh, draw the partial diagram here. 18th, 19th, 20th, and 21st. Those are four thousand dollars, and let's say here, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-first, and this amount is X. Okay. So to have sufficient money to pay this four four thousand dollars, we set a single payment of X at the end of. Period 17, okay? So how do you get this X value? X would be 4,000 times P given A and 5% over four periods. 21 minus 17 is four, so four periods, right? And what is this value? P given A. 5% over 4 periods, that is 3.546, 3.546 times 4,000, okay, so how much is that? This is going to be $14,184, okay? So this $14,184 must be accumulated by the two series of deposits, right? This one series and another series here, okay? And the four 600 deposits were accumulate by X down here, right? At the end of her 17th birthday. And these four annual uniform investments will be converted to an uh, equivalent future value at the end of 7th birthday and then again it will be converted to an equivalent future value at the end of 17th birthday right here okay so What I'm going to do first is four, five, six, seven, six hundred. Let's say this is the F sub seven, okay? So we are going to convert this annual series to the equivalent future sum F7 at the end of 7th birthday. 
So here, f sub 7 equals 600 times f given a and 5% over 4 period. So how much is that? In our text page, 608 f given a over 4 period is 4.310. This is the 4.310. So how much is that? F7 Oh. Okay. Okay, so this is the $2,586. And, um, and then again, this value, the future value, F7, will be converted to the equivalent future sum at the end of her, his daughter's 17th birthday. So let's say this x, no, let's say the this f7, which is equal to twenty two thousand five hundred eighty six eighty six dollars, need to be converted to the e uh, equivalent future sum at the end of 17th birthday, so F17, okay, right here. So how'd you get F17? That is gonna be $2,586 times F given P, 5%, and how many periods? 17 minus 7 is 10, right? So what is this value? F given P over 10 periods, that is 1.629, 1.629, okay? This is the 1.629. So F17 is going to be that is going to be $4,212.59, OK? So the annual deposits, annual deposits between 8th birthday and 17th birthday must accumulate a future sum. So here, the 
the annual deposits between 8th and 17th birthday must accumulate a future sum which is x here okay future sum x so we need to take 14,184 dollars from the previous calculation here x is 14,184 dollars right? minus this value f17 which is 4212 dollars and 59 cents that is going to be the annual deposits between the 8th and 17th birthday okay so how much is that that is going to be $9,971.41. Okay? And this is not an answer, right? So the answer, which is the series of 10 deposit must be A equals this value $9,971.41 times what? What is this value? $9,971.41 that is the annual deposit between 8th birthday and 17th birthday and this amount of money is the equivalent future sum at the end of her 17th birthday so what you need to do is convert this future sum into the equivalent uniform series over 10 periods right? So that's why you need to multiply $9,971.41 times A given F, 5% over 10 period, right? which is from 8th birthday through 17th birthday. So how much is that? A given F is... 0 0.0795 0 0.0795 so how much is it? There is almost um, $792.73. Okay? So that is the answer. Okay? So he need to deposit $792.72 on his daughter's 
eighth birthday through seventeenth birthday. Okay. Okay. And next problem that you are going to solve. What about problem 4-40? So an engineering student bought a car at a local used car lot, including tax and insurance. The total price was $3,000 and he is to pay for the car in 12 equal monthly payments beginning with the first payment immediately. In other words, the first payment was a down payment. And nominal interest on the loan is 12% compounded monthly. After six, after six payments, the down payments plus five additional payments, he decides to sell the car. And the buyer agrees to pay a cash amount to pay off the loan in full at the time the next payment is due and also pay the engineering student $1,000. If there are no penalty charges for these early payments of the loan, how much will the car cost the new buyer? Okay. So, as a user, let's draw the cash flow diagram based on this problem description. So, we are working on problem 4 40. And so, he, he, buy, he bought a $3,000 car and he has to pay for the car in 12 equal monthly payments, right? So he pays how much? $3,000. And he need to pay for the car in 12 equally equal monthly payments but beginning with the first payment immediately. So instead of having the first payment next period, he will gonna pay the first payment immediately. So we can consider this would be part of his down payment. Okay? So zero, one, two, Three, four, five, six, and seven, and then let's say eleven. In that case, we're gonna pay twelve equal monthly payment, right, from zero to eleven, instead of one to twelve. Okay. So we want to know this equal payment amount, right? And what interest rate do we have to use? So twelve percent. The given interest rate, the nominal interest on the loan is 12%, but it says compounded monthly. So the 12% nominal interest with monthly compounding means that 
the bank pays 1% monthly, right? The bank pays 1% monthly. Why is that? Because 12% divided by 12. Because there are 12 months in a year. So that we're going to have 1% here. Okay? So the monthly payment could be computed like 3,000, which is from here, equals A at time 0 plus A times P given A's 1% over how many periods? 11 periods. So, what is the value of this factor? If you look at our text, page number five, 598, it provides the um, present worst factor for 1% of interest rate. And over 11 period, is 10.368, 10.368, okay? This value is 10.368. So it's going to be 11.368 times A, right? So what is the value of A? A is 3,000 divided by 11.36A. So this is $263.90, okay? And in the problem description, after six months, after six payments, you decide to sell the car and the buyer agrees to pay a cash amount to pay off the loan in full at the time the next payment is due. So the payoff loan in full is right here at the end of sixth period, right? Right here, pay off loan in full, right here, okay? And he will also pay you $1,000 right here, right? So you'd like to know how much the new buyer needs to spend to buy the car at the end of the sixth, per sixth payment, okay? At the end of sixth period, sorry. So the car cost for the new buyer would be
$1,000 because he promised to provide you $1,000 plus the monthly payment on that period, which is $263.90, right? Two sixty nine. I'm sorry. Two sixty three and ninety cents. And plus what? Plus an equivalent sum, equivalent five uniform payments of two hundred sixty three dollars and ninety cents. Right. So it's going to be two sixty three. Point ninety times P given A one percent over five period eleven seven through eleven right which is five period I'm sorry it's six through eleven right so and this value five percent P given A over 5 period is 4.329. No, um, it's 1%. I was looking at wrong value for interest rate. So under the 1%, P given A over 5 periods is 4.853. It's 4.853. So how much is that? Okay, that's going to be $2,544. And 61 cents. Okay? So this is the car cost for the new buyer at the end of payment period six. Okay? Because uh, you're going to pay $1,000 plus the monthly payment on that period, which is $263.90, plus an equivalent five uniform payments of $263.90, which will be $2,544.61, okay? Okay, then next, let's consider problem 4-44. Okay, so an engineer borrowed $3,000 from the bank, payable in six equal end-of-year payments at 8%. The bank agreed to reduce the interest on the loan if interest rates declined in the United States before the loan was fully repaid. At the end of three years, at the time of the third payments, the bank agreed to reduce the interest rate from 8% to 7% on the remaining debts. What was the amount of the equal annual end-of-year payments for each of the first three years? And what was the amount of the equal annual end-of-year end payments for each of the last three years as well? So we need to answer for these two questions, right? So let's draw the cash flow diagram first. So we are working on
problem number 4-44 okay and an engineer borrowed three thousand dollars from the bank so he borrows three thousand dollars from the bank and payable in six equal end of year payments so zero one two three four five and six okay It's going to be, no, this is a no value, right? Okay. And what about the interest rate? Okay, interest rate going to be 8%, okay? So the monthly payment amount could be calculated as A equals P, which is $3,000, times A given P, right? And 8% over six periods, right? Oops, six. So let's use the table value again for interest rate of 8%. So if you look at our text page 611, A given P over period 6 is 0 0.2163, 0 0.2163. So how much is that? That's going to be $648.90, okay? Okay, and then what's next? Um, according to the problem des description, at the end of year three, at the end of three years, at the time of the third payments, the bank reduced the interest rate on the remaining debts from 8% to 7%, right? And we'd like to know what was the amount of the equal annual end of year payments for each of the first three years. We already got the solution, right, for the first question, which is this, right? So this is the amount of the equal annual end of year payments for each of the first three years, okay? And then the next question is, uh, what is the amount of the equal payment, equal amount end of year payments for each of the last three years, okay? So if I redraw the cash flow diagram so if I said P prime at the end of three years, which represents the balance due after the third payments. Okay, so P prime is the balance due. after the third payment.
then how do you get this value p prime? Here the p prime. which is the balance due after the third payment, equals the present worth of the originally planned last three payments, which is $648.90, right? So this is the $648.90. So I said the balance due after the third payment is equal to the present worth of the originally planned last three payments, which is $648.90. So what you need to do is using this value multiplied by P given A, right? And 8% over three period, right? And what is this value? A percent P given A over three periods. That is 2.577. So how much is that? going to be $1,672.22. So is this the answer for the second question? No. This P prime need to be converted to an equivalent three uniform payments with new interest rate, which is 7%, right? So the last three payments So here we have P prime, which is $1,672.22, this is 3, and we want to know this A prime with new interest rate, 7%, okay? so. We want to know A prime. So how do you get it? A prime, which is the last three payments with new interest rate 7%, would be $1,672.22 times A given P, 7% over three periods. That's all right. So, in page number 610, it provides the capital recovery factor with 7% interest rate. So, for the period 3, it provides 0 0.3811. 0 0.3811. Times $1,672.22. So how much is that? That 
it is six hundred thirty seven dollars and twenty eight cents so this is the answer for the second question okay that is the last three payments amount okay Okay, then next question that you are going to solve. Next problem is how about problem number 4 100, which is about the nominal interest and effective interest. Okay, so first, okay, um, let's read the problem description. One of the largest car dealers in the city advertises a three-year-old car for sale as follows. Cash price of $3,575 or a down payment of $375 with 45 monthly payments of $93.41. And Susan bought the car and made a down, down payment of $800. The dealer charged her the same interest rate used in his advertised offer. And how much will Susan pay each month for 45 months? And what effective interest rate is being charged? So let's draw the cash flow diagram. So we are dealing with problem number 4 100. So the car price is listed as three thousand five hundred seventy five dollars right one two three say forty four forty five or a down payment of $375 with a 45 monthly payments of $93.41, right? So here, down payments of $375 immediately. And then for the next 45 months, he need to pay equal amount of $93.41. Is that right? Okay. And we want to know the interest rate charged. So how would you get the interest rate. Here you can see that this negative cash flow should be equal to the positive cash flow, right? So simply you can set $3,575 so equal to $375 plus the $93.41 for the next 45 
monthly payment, right? So it's going to be P given A and I percent over 45 months. Is that right? So how do you get this factor? It's P given A, I percent over 45 periods is equal to 3,575 minus 375 divided by 93.41. So how much is that? Okay, so this is going to be thirty-four dollars and twenty-six cents, almost. And then, uh, if you check the compound interest table from Appendix C. Well, it doesn't provide the exact value for that. And we can always go with the formula. Here, P given A, I percent 45. Can we go with one plus I to the power 45 minus one over i times 1 plus i to the power 45, okay? So, using this formula, um, I've got the value earlier. Um, where did I put it? Some from this computation I can get I equal to 1.25 percent okay or you might want to go with the linear interpolation to get this uh, interest rate okay that we have learned earlier in this class and because we are run out of time uh, let me just provide you this interest rate which is 1.25 percent Uh, 
So what's next? Okay, so um, we got I is 1.25% per month, right? So for an $800 down payment. How much is the unpaid balance? The unpaid balance is, sorry, $2,775, right? $2,775. This is the unpaid balance. So um, A is going to be $2,775 times A given P, 1.25% over 45 months, 45 period, okay? And earlier I learned some relationship between the compound interest factors. So if you look at the page number um, 117, in our text and the equation number 4-9 represents the relationship between the capital recovery factor and the present worth factor right and here according to the equation 4-9 a given P I over N is equal to 1 over P given A I percent over N period, right? Because we already got P given A I percent over 45 periods. which is equal to 34.26. So using this relationship, we can get this factor value easily, which is 0 0.0292, okay? That is one over 34.26. So how much is that? That's going to be eighty-one dollars and three cents. So Susan's monthly payment would be eighty-one dollars and three cents. Okay. So this is the answer for the first question. And what is the second question? The second question is what effective interest rate is being charged? So we need to get the effective interest rate there is going to be 1 plus i to the power m minus 1 okay 
So, what is I? That is 1.25%. 1 plus 0 0.0125, right? And what is M? That, that's going to be 12, right? Because there are 12 months in a year. Minus 1. So how much is that? That's going to be 0 0.161. So the effective interest rate would be 16.1% per year, right? Okay, so let's solve one more problem, uh, which is going to be problem 4-47. And this question is about the relationships between different factors. So for some uh, interest rate i and some number of interest period n, the uniform series capital recovery factor is 0.1728, and the sinking fund factor is 0 0.0378. Then what is the interest rate in this case? So again, if you look at the page number 117 in our text, and in equation number 4-13, shows the relationship between the uniform series capital recovery factor and uniform series sinking fund factor. So we are working on problem number 4-47. So, equation 4 13 tells that A given P I over N equals A given F I over N plus I, right? So, from the problem description, the capital recovery factor is 0.1728. And the sinking fund factor is 0 0.0378. So we want to know the interest rate, right? So what is the I interest rate? That's going to be 0 0.1728 minus 0 0.03. Seven A, which is point one three five zero. So the answer is three thirteen point five percent. Thirteen point yeah five percent. So this is quite simple problem, right? if you know the relationship between factors. Okay, so I'm going to stop here for today. And next time, we'll continue to solve the end of chapter 4 problems. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.